past 15 years, the World Wildlife Fund has published its Living Planet report to highlight trends in global biodiversity and the health of the planet. However, due to human-caused climate change and the loss of nature around the world, this year's report reveals that wildlife populations are struggling. CBS News Los Angeles meteorologist and environmental reporter Marina Jerica joins us now. Marina, from heat waves to hurricanes, it feels like there are climate emergencies that I'm reporting on every day. I'm sure it's even more so for you. How are the wildlife populations dealing with all of these catastrophes? Well, Lana, unfortunately, this is just the beginning of our Earth reacting to the changing climate. And the reality is animals around the globe are struggling, as you said. According to this year's report, there has been a 73% decline in the average size of monitored wildlife populations in the past 50 years. So this means that over the last 50 years, the size of monitored wildlife populations has reduced on average by almost three quarters. Now, this report is based on nearly 35,000 population trends and 5,495 species of vertebrates, which include amphibians, birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. Now, declines in wildlife populations are often early warning indicators of increasing extinction risk and the potential loss of healthy ecosystems, which they were living in. So in my own research in paleoclimatology, I've studied these past extinctions and their related climate cycles that were at that time. And this crucial research can help us understand our future and then have a better plan as we all move forward, hopefully positively together. Well, Maria, that's really interesting. I'm wondering if when you're, when you're doing this, um, if you're looking at specific areas, are, are we seeing places where the population losses are most pronounced? And is that a harbinger of... of what we're expecting to see and, and, uh, and how quickly things are ramping up. Well, globally, the steepest declines are seen in Latin America and the Caribbean, and that's at 95%, so that's significant. And then Africa, Asia, and the Pacific follow. Now, the losses in North America and Europe are at 35 to 39%, and the reason that it appears a little less pronounced is because there were already major impacts on nature when scientists began tracking species populations back in the 1970s. So you can see that it is, unfortunately, a global issue. I'm wondering if we can leave our viewers with any hope that these trends can be reversed. Well, these freshwater populations have suffered the strongest declines by far at 85%, followed by terrestrial and marine populations. So a significant factor for freshwater fish and how their habitat is often altered. For example, a dam or some other blockage can prohibit essential migration routes. For terrestrial species, their habitats often include places such as forests and desert and grasslands, which are quickly disappearing all around the world. And then as for marine populations, some have managed to survive so well due to the proper management to prevent overfishing while other species of sharks and stingrays continue to show critical levels of decline. Now, I did some research on blue whales in particular that have been hit hard in their migration from Alaska to Baja as warming ocean waters are having them birth their calves in unprotected waters where very rare orcas have come to feed off the shores of California. But as you said, there are hope in these trends, but time is critical. The mm -hmm. next five years change is imperative. Things can be done to help restore wildlife populations, and we can start by increasing the amount of conservation land and lands and oceans that are protected. And we really need to make sure that we reconsider how we grow our food, because 40% of all habitable land is dedicated to agriculture, and 70% of water use goes to farming. And back to basics, Lana, we need to switch from fossil fuels to renewable energy to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The more we can educate and empower, the more we can all sustain living on this planet together. Well, I feel more educated by you for sure. Marina Drika, thank you.